Okay, there's a useful fact in physics that forces of constraint do no work. So I wanted to illustrate just with three quick examples what I'm talking about and why it's true. So first example, we've seen a lot of these already. Suppose I have a box on a level surface. And what do I mean by a force of constraint? Um, it's a force that's guiding the path of an object. And in this case, it's the normal force. So the normal force is what's making it so this object doesn't just start moving down and go through the surface. So the normal force in this case is the force of constraint. The box is constrained to this path because of that normal force. So why doesn't the normal force do any work? Um, it's because if I look at some kind of displacement along this surface, the normal force is always perpendicular to that displacement. So an angle of 90 degrees means that our work is going to is going to vanish. So I'll just I'll draw or write down a formula real quick. So the work done by the normal force is given by the normal force dot product displacement. That's equal to the magnitude of the normal force, magnitude of the displacement, cosine of the angle between them, but the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. And this is the essence of it for any example that I could come up with. Constraint forces are always perpendicular to the direction that something is moving. So this could even be true on a crazy roller coaster. If I look at some moment on this roller coaster, the normal force is, of course, pushing perpendicular. And maybe now I would have to use a different symbol than x for my displacement, but it doesn't change the fact. So I'll just call it like a dr. It doesn't change the fact that the normal force is perpendicular to the, dis to the displacement at that one moment in time. So this angle is going to change over time. Like when the roller coaster cart is here, the normal force is going to be pushing perpendicular but the cart is going to be moving parallel. So even though this is just for a short little increment of time and space, the work contribution that you get for that little instant is zero. So overall, that normal force is never doing any work. All right, let's look at a third case. In the third case, I have a pendulum, that's a string with a mass tied to it. And it's going to drop down like this to its lowest position. And I have gravity acting on this thing. And if I look at a short little displacement vector, it's pointing that way at this moment in time. That'll be my dr. Force of gravity, of course, is mg, so I'll just go ahead and put that in. I can see that the angle between the force of gravity and the displacement is less than 90 degrees, so I'm going to get a positive little bit of work in the next short amount of time. All right, but the force of constraint here, why is this thing moving on a circular path instead of falling straight down? Like, what's enforcing the shape of the path? It's the tension in the string. And once again, I see that the constraint force is perpendicular to the direction of displacement at that moment. So I could say that the work done by the tension would be given by the tension dot product, the little dr or delta r. I'll just call it a delta. So I can use the same video for my trig physics class. That's the magnitude of the tension times the magnitude of that little displacement increment times the cosine of the angle between them. But again, theta is 90 degrees between the constraint force and the direction of motion, so I'm going to get zero.